Hello everybody, I am Ardhan Dode. You are watching my channel Ladies English Literature. Here in this lecture, I will discuss Grim Barnard's law from phonetics as well as linguistic. The law of first consonant shift from philology is most important topic that often pops up in our literary studies as well as from linguistic studies. We will better analyze this part and try to comprehend in simple term what this technical or what the technicality it rests upon us and how this linguistic part is very important for language studies. The Germanic speech group in which the place of English is in the subfamily uh, it itself constitutes a branch of the Indo-European family of languages. Many modifications were taking place in the primitive Germanic and just as it had originated as a dialect of Indo-European, so it was itself breaking up into several dialects, you know, and mainly on geographical basis uh, this ling linguistic or these language formations were done. There are many interrelations among these branches and branches of the or the sub branches of the subfamily of these kind of languages. And this crisscrossing yet fascinating study from philology is itself a anthropological study as well as linguistic study as well as study of literature. Such an important uh, change is being observed here in this language group by Jacob Grimm, a German philologist. Uh, in the primitive Germanic consonant shift, he particularly finds out that. Presently, we will try to explain here and note the corrigendum by Danish philologist Varnard out of his. So here, uh, Grimm and Varnard that have propounded the theory of consonant shifts or first consonant shifts is the main focus of our studies. The corresponding study of Indo-European languages, as you all know, the basis of it is Latin, Sanskrit and Greek and primitive Germanic group was closely supervised or observed by Jacob Grimm. In a number of Latin words are placed alongside their equivalents in Germanic languages so that they can easily be compared. It almost invariably happens a few changes in sound system. The Indo-European consonant system remained intact but the primitive Germanic group had changed it and the change had apparently proceeded so regularly that it must have some definite methodological course of happening. These changes are noted as Grimm's law. Now what Grimm the philologist has observed, I will minutely or graphically explain you in this diagram. In a comparative study among these languages, it is found that whereas unvoiced non-aspirate sound remains intact in their correlative languages, it becomes unvoiced aspirate in old Germanic. It is more likely uh, the change the voiced aspire to voiced non-aspire and unvoiced non-aspire to aspire. It is more likely this kind of change voiced aspirate to voiced non-aspirate first then it turns into unvoiced non-aspirate. Now take it a simple analysis here. Firstly, the sounds BH, DH, GH, BA, DHA and GHA occurring in the Indo-Germanic that is primitive becomes BA, DHA and GHA in Germanic. For example, take for example Sanskrit DHA becomes English DU. So here DHA sound turns into DHA. The Sanskrit VU in English becomes bu. The bo turns into bo. Or Latin ghostis become nest. So ghost sound becomes go sound. Secondly, 
the sounds like bo, da, and ga in Indo Germanic becomes pa, ta, and ka in Germanic. For example, the bo turns into pa. Latin genu becomes ni. So transformation from ga to ka and Latin dens become tit in English. D turns into T. Thirdly, the Indo Germanic sounds pa, ta, and ka becomes fa, ta, and ka in Germanic. For example, the Sanskrit pod becomes English foot. So pa becomes fa, and Latin pater becomes English father. The Sanskrit vatri becomes the English brother. Latin codis become English hit. So here ka turns into ka. And the ho is prominent here. Actually Grimm's law was not quite accurate or rather it was accurate as far as it went but it did not account for all the changes in question. These laws, for example, do not operate when the consonants are in such combination as S, P, S, T or H, T. There are further irregularities which were later made up by the Danish philologist Karl Varner. The law named after him clarified the deficiency that except when occurring initially or except when immediately followed a trist level, the Indo-Germanic Ko, to and Po instead of becoming Ka, Ta and Pa change reversal and become Ga, Da and Ba. Thus, in uh, accordance to Varner's law, Sanskrit Anthar becomes the English word Andar. T turns into D. Now, this is not the whole story of consonant shift. After a close study of primitive Germanic group, Gothic, Scandinavian and West Germanic where from the English derived, Varner gave the law of rotacism. It states that the Indo-Germanic sound S or SO becomes modified as J in Germanic and later it changes into West Germanic English RA. When it occurred medially, in a word was now modified to an R while at the end of the word the tendency was for it to disappear altogether. For example, we have English here whose corresponding Sanskrit word is Kasos which also had an intermediate form of Haja in Gothic. This also explains why in modern English the plural was is where and that of is, are. However, it is to be noted that rotacism only occurs when so sound is preceded by an unaccented syllable. Even it is to be followed by an any unaccented syllable, it does not operate. So this is the complex theory. I have tried my best to explain it in simple language. If there is any questions regarding Grimm's Varner's law, you can just pop up here and ask me questions. I will try my best to explain it to you. Like, share, comment and obviously subscribe to my channel so that I can make these kind of videos, educational videos for you. Bye bye. Thank you.